Hi, welcome to the Quick Street Workshop. In the previous week, I showed you uh, partly how I started assembling this rotor, uh, but I didn't go into depth about it. So in this video, you're going to see me assemble the whole thing and also hang the motor and do some electrics. Quite a tight fit, so I need to hammer this in with a soft hammer. Here I decided to put the rotor in my lathe to see if everything runs true but I also had it to, to tap the end. You can see the tap is still in the, in the end there. So now next on my list is the seals. Now for me to do this I have to take 
some measurements and to determine uh, exactly how deep I should cut the grooves in, in the plastic so that it can slide up and down and create a seal for the water to keep in. So this will not be a 100% seal, but when you use the beater, the fibers of whatever you are beating will, will also go in, in there and it will seal it up more. So I've roughly determined the lines, how deep I want to cut it, as well as measured exactly where the center of my holes should be on the plastic. The next step will be to drill these holes out. I'm using this uh, hole cutter and I did several tests um, to get the right size hole. This was too small and I ended up with one that fits perfectly around the shaft. It's a 30 millimeter shaft. So I want a tight seal on, on there. So I've measured where my hole must be on this and I'm going to put it here to make sure. Perfect hole. Put the other one in. So I need to make grooves around up to that line. And I found that this saw is the perfect size, perfect width to make a good seal. Here I'm using my hacksaw just to create a nice straight line and my grinder to help with a starting groove. Now I must admit that um, this process is quite labor intensive. It is not easy to cut in this, uh, it's a nylon type of plastic. If I had a thin blade that fitted into my electric uh, so then it, it would have been much easier but unfortunately I didn't have a thin blade like that so it's elbow grease So the bed parts are just um, parts like this and I, I bend them in the middle with this bending break just like that give them a bend and then they are like that there's a stack and there's threaded rods that's going to go through the holes so I've stacked them, there's one wide one and then a, a narrow one and wide one, narrow one, wide one, wide one, narrow one, 
the alternate and this is all just stacked, packed in loose just to see how it's gonna work but basically the rotor would grind into these these are stationary they just stand still and the rotor rotates and this is what cuts the fibers of the paper if you more paper so this will eventually wear out and then you replace them. These rings there on the shaft is for circlips to, to hold the bearing in place so that the, the rotor doesn't move sideways. Finally, I can assemble this rotor assembly because I've got the seals. This one goes on this side. They go first. That's a tight fit. Next thing, these circlips. They hold the bearing in place. And then the bearings, I'm just going to heat them up a little bit. It's not a press fit, um, it's just a size to size fit. But I find it is easier if the bearing is just little bit um, normally if it's a sunny day I, I'll put them in the Sun but today there's no Sun it's cloudy so I not too much because I don't want the, the grease inside or the seals to get damaged it's just hot enough so that I can pick it up but it burns my fingers And we're done. And this side, the big pulley goes. I think I'm also going to put that on. It's easier when it's here. This pulley, um, it's called a taper lock. Um, you insert this over the shaft. And then this, this inner part, it's got two screws that you tighten and that actually shrinks this in around the shaft. And it, to remove it, you have to unscrew these and screw it into this hole, then it pops out. I'm just gonna put it on this way.
the key goes in there. And then I'm putting this little piece on just to lock it all in place. Nothing is touching, it's perfect. Enough clearance for the belt. And there's enough clearance there. Great.
So what uh, was supposed to take me only an hour took me about three hours to figure out the wiring because this diagram that was on the motor is completely wrong and uh, after investigating it and asking a friend and also finding out that this diagram on this switch was also wrong um, luckily with his advice I managed to to put all the wires in and I just need to say that don't trust the diagrams on the side of electronic devices. After a bit of back and forth on WhatsApp, Jason showed me that the diagram on, on the, uh, the motor and the little diagram on the switch was wrong and we managed to figure it out. He drew me some diagrams and it was just a little bit backwards and eventually I got it working perfectly. Thank you so much again, man.